being someone over the age of 50 and having had a research program in Alzheimer's disease for over 20 years now, I can tell you, when I can't remember where I put my car keys or I can't remember the name of someone I should know in the store, I get this knot in my stomach that these are the early signs of Alzheimer's disease. And I'm not alone. In a recent study asking Americans over the age of 60 the condition they were most afraid of, Alzheimer's disease was their number one fear. And there's good reason to be afraid. During the course of this disease, individuals can literally lose half, half their brain mass as brain cells die and wither away. Now, as scientists, we call these brain cells neurons. And neurons are special. You're born with a set, a hundred billion, which, by the way, represents more than the stars in our galaxy. And they're meant to last a lifetime. So it's not surprising that when you begin to lose large numbers of these neurons, brain function is also lost. And we can see this if we compare a brain scan of an Alzheimer's patient with that of an 80-year-old normal. And what you'll see is there's a dramatic reduction in brain activity, as indicated by the cool colors on the PET scan. Now, here's something else that's interesting. If you compare the PET scan of the 80-year-old normal with a 20-year-old, I would argue there's very little difference in brain activity. Moreover, those neurons in the 80-year-old, they've been around about 60 more years. So there's a lot of wisdom, a lot of experience. So the old adage, respect your elders, really rings true even at the molecular level. So what is Alzheimer's disease? Alzheimer's disease is a progressive brain disorder that slowly destroys memory and thinking skills. Another word for these symptoms, dementia. So dementia describes the symptoms. Alzheimer's disease is the leading cause of dementia with over 70% of all the known cases of dementia being a result of Alzheimer's disease. Today, there's no cure, no effective treatment, one out of three seniors will be diagnosed with dementia, and it kills more than prostate and breast cancer combined. One of the questions that I get asked most often out in the community is, what's the single thing I can do to prevent from getting Alzheimer's disease? And I have a good response for that. Stop aging, don't get old. And we say that kind of tongue in cheek because we know that advancing age is by far the greatest risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. But that being said, your genetic makeup is also an important piece of the Alzheimer's puzzle. And in that regard, the most important genetic risk factor for the most common form of Alzheimer's disease is a gene called the ApoE4 gene. Let's look at the inheritance of this gene. Let's say that you inherit one copy from dad. Your risk for Alzheimer's will go up two to fourfold, which on the low end is on the same odds ratio as if you have diabetes or hypertension. The real concern is if you inherit both genes from mom and dad, then your risk skyrockets 10 to 15 fold. And today, it has become incredibly easy relatively cheap and fast to be tested for your ApoE4 gene. Simply mail off a saliva sample to any one of these direct-to-consumer genetic companies, and within a very short time, they will send back to you a report that looks something like this, informing you of your ApoE4 status. So what should you know about this test? First, the ApoE4 gene is known as a genetic susceptibility risk factor. Susceptibility being the key word. You can inherit the ApoE4 gene and never have Alzheimer's, gene, uh, Alzheimer's disease. And in fact, many ApoE4 carriers go on to live 
normal, mentally healthy lives without ever being diagnosed with the disease. On the other hand, non-APOE4 carriers are still at risk for Alzheimer's disease. And this is incredibly important to understand before you undergo genetic screening. Because of this increase in uncertainty and because of the increased anxiety and or depression that may carry with a positive uh, diagnosis in terms of whether or not you have the ApoE4 gene or not, the Alzheimer's Association currently recommends that the general public not be tested for the ApoE4 gene. But let's say that you do get tested. You find out you're carrying one or more of the ApoE4 genes. Now you're really afraid because you feel like the odds are against you. What can you do? Let me introduce you to Sister Matthias, a model of healthy aging shown here at 104. Her and other school sisters of the Notre Dame participated in a longitudinal study that today has simply become known as the NUN study. And one of the most intriguing findings of the NUN study was that many of these sisters appeared to be resistant to Alzheimer's disease. Take Sister Bernadette, another participant. At the time of her death, Sister Bernadette had massive numbers of what we call the, uh, the plaques and tangles. These are the molecular troublemakers that you find in the brain of an Alzheimer's patient. She had massive numbers. In fact, she had the highest score possible, indicating the greatest degree of spread. Put another way, the pathology that was seen in Sister Bernadette's brain was what we would typically see for someone who may have inherited both ApoE4 genes. The bottom line, she should have been severely demented. Yet, at the time near her death, she showed no cognitive decline and she had aced all of her tests. In fact, the principal investigator of the study, Dr. David Snowden, had coined her an escapee. So what was special about Sister Bernadette, Sister Matthias, and these other nuns that seemingly allowed them to escape the clutches of Alzheimer's disease? Scientists believe that they had built up a lifetime of cognitive reserve. Cognitive reserve refers to the brain's resilience to some form of neuropathological damage. You see, the brain is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it becomes, the stronger the synaptic connections become, and it's the more resistant it is able to resist a disease like Alzheimer's disease. So, of course, we can't all live the pious lives of the good sisters of Notre Dame. But there are things that we can do every day in our life to build our own cognitive reserve, regardless of whether we carry the ApoE4 gene or not. So I give to you my five commandments for building your cognitive reserve. Commandment number one, thou shall minimize risk factors for cerebral vascular disease. Here's the saying, what's bad for the heart is bad for the mind high blood cholesterol, diabetes, hypertension. What are some mitigating factors? A healthy diet like the Mediterranean diet or the DASH diet. And if we go back to the good sisters, we know that they ate very healthy. And in addition, exercise. Five days a week for 30 minutes is known to build your cognitive reserve. And again, we know that the good sisters, besides eating a healthy diet, also regularly exercised. Commandment number two, thou shalt maintain intellectual engagement throughout life. And we want not just intellectual engagement, we want social interactions. And we know, going back to the nun study, that many of the sisters were teachers early in their lives and had maintained this intellectual curiosity throughout. And there are very simple things that we can do every day to build our cognitive reserve in this manner. Reading a book, solving brain teasers, 
doing crossword puzzles, listening to TED Talks. Commandment number three, thou shalt obtain restful and restorative sleep. If you're like most Americans, you're not. In fact, over a third of Americans do not get that magic number, eight hours a night. That's what your brain needs to help replenish and renew itself and to get ready for the next day. Here's something else. We know that it is while you sleep that the brain is actively removing those molecular troublemakers like the plaques. So if you're not getting enough sleep, you're allowing those to build up and in turn, you're increasing your risk for dementia. Commandment number four, thou shall manage stress effectively. Stress is a huge negative regulator of brain health. By itself, stress can increase your risk of dementia upwards of 25%. So managing your daily stress should be a key outcome of any Alzheimer's preventative strategy. And going back to our good sisters, what can we do? Prayer, meditation, yoga, massage, therapy, deep breathing, guided visual, visualization where we're mentally picturing a place or situation that's peaceful and calm. These things can all reduce our daily stress and help build our cognitive reserve. And finally, my last commandment. Commandment number five, thou shalt choose thy parents wisely. <laughs> of course, we can't choose our parents. But this speaks to your genetic makeup. And I'll just remind you that Sister Bernadette and Sister Matthias, they couldn't pick their parents either. Yet that did not stop them from building their own cognitive reserve. So the next time... We can't remember where we put our keys or we can't remember the name of a person we see in the store that we should know. We don't have to be afraid. We have the ability to control the things in our lives that will lead to a stronger mind, a greater degree of cognitive reserve and an increased resistance, not only to Alzheimer's disease, but other disorders as well. We have the power to shift the odds in our favor, regardless of our genetics. Thank you.